Hello, this is our last video. There's been three videos. There'll be three videos total. The first video was all about arc sine. The second video was all about arc cosine. This video is all about arc tangent. Now, some people write it with the minus one and where an exponent would be at, but I don't want you to get that confused. That is not an exponent. That's a symbol for inverse tangent. Okay, inverse tangent. So we have to be able to take the tangent function and invert it. Now, tangent is different than sine and cosine. It has a natural sort of uh, domain that, that, that is invertible, the standard minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so that's going to be our restricted domain. We can't use all of tangent because it wouldn't pass the, the horizontal line test. But if we stick to just the, the principal period from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, then that passes the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. So it will be invertible if we stick in that domain of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. The range all possible values of minus infinity to infinity. So then when it comes to inverting that, we switch the input and output. So the, the input then is all possible real numbers minus infinity to infinity. And then the output is then minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. And so this is the one inverse trig functions graph that you need. Um, you need that because it, it, it exhibits this behavior as x goes to infinity and as x goes to negative infinity that the other graphs don't exhibit at all. And so um, the limit as x goes to infinity on the arctan function is pi over 2. Um, how arctan cancels, just like the other ones, the, when you follow up a function with this inverse, you'll get the x out. So an arctan of a tan of x gives you x. A tangent of an arctan of x gives you x. Okay. Uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of arctan of x. Um, as x goes to negative infinity, the function goes to negative pi over 2. And as x goes to infinity, the function goes to pi over 2. All right. So we know the graph of that. And now we need to look at evaluating the arctan function at three different input values. Output values are minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. You can only use those angles that are in that range of values. Now, it's just like what we had for arc sine. We can only use the right-hand side of the unit circle, but for this fourth quadrant, we can only use those negative angles there, not the positive version. Okay. Let's see. It was easier with arc cos with with cosine and sine because their their values are immediately you know readable on the unit circle. But tangent doesn't have those values readable on the unit circle. But we could put them in though. Okay, so um, this question is saying what angle do you plug into tangent and have it spit out a, a negative one? So let's go ahead and put our tangents in here uh, of pi over two. The tangent of pi over two is undefined. And then pi over 3, the tangent is uh, root 3, and then 1, and then 1 over root 3, 0, and then the negatives of those guys. So now it's just as easily readable as it was for sine and cosine. So you are looking for the, the angle that has a tangent of negative 1. That's negative pi over 4. The angle that has a tangent of root 3, that's pi over 3. The angle that has a tangent of negative 1 over root 3, anytime it's negative, it's down in the fourth quadrant there. And so, yeah, it's going to be negative pi over 6. So you know how to evaluate the arctan function. Good. What about its derivative? Okay, like with the others, we employ the inverse function derivative theorem, which says basically, if you know the original function, in this case tangent, and its derivative, secant squared, then you can find the inverse function's derivative. You do 1 over the original function's derivative, but not at x, at the inverse function. So to be 1 over secant squared, not of x, but of arctan of x. That's the derivative. And we're going to fix it up, of course. It's not the best way to write it. Um, secant and tangent have this relationship. Pythagorean that um, 
the 1 plus the tan squared is the secant squared. And so the uh, denominator is going to be replaced then with, instead of, um, instead of having an x within, the, within, within that identity, we're going to replace it with arctan of x. The secant squared on arctan of x is equal to 1 plus the tangent squared on arctan of x. All right, great. I just hate the way we write our exponents like that. So that's tangent of arctan, whole thing written to the x square. And that's how they cancel, right? The tangent followed by the arctan, that just gives you x. And so there we have it. The derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Different than arc sine and cosine. Arc cosine because they had the radical in there. This is how it comes out from our analysis here. So if your function is arctan, your derivative is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And now you know why. And of course, most questions aren't just this. They'll be the chain rule version of this. Arctan of another function is derivative 1 over 1 plus that function squared times the derivative of that function. Let's see an example. Oh, no example? Oh, man, sorry, no example. But you'll have plenty of examples if you look up um, the problems that I give you. Um, I want to answer some background questions. What? Why is the word arc used? Seems strange. Arc? Why arc? Okay. And so um, it has to do with arc length. Um, if you have a circle of radius r, the, the letter that's often used for arc length is s. And there's a formula relating s and r and theta that the product of the central angle theta and the radius is how long the arc um, that will be um, uh, cut by that angle, by that central angle. Okay, so s is equal to r theta. What about when r is equal to 1? Like for the unit circle, r is equal to 1. Uh, this formula then says that s is equal to theta. The arc length will be equal to the angle measurement on the unit circle. And that's what we're looking for, right? The output of an inverse trig function is the angle. But the angle can be thought of as an arc. Okay, here's a good picture I found online. So the angle that we're looking for when we're trying to answer an inverse trig function can be thought of as the length of the arc that that angle subtends, that that angle cuts. And so the blue angle there cuts the blue arc. And that arc is going to be uh, with cosine. And then the, the red angle or the pink angle there cuts the, the pink arc. And that's going to be then the angle that goes along with sine. So arc sine and arc cosine because the arc and the angle are tied together in the unit circle. All right, great. We're all done. Three videos about inverse trig and their derivatives. Now you know why the formulas are what they are. You even know or hopefully remember how to evaluate inverse trig functions. And now hopefully with this slide, I can show why the word arc is used. And so that's the end of this set of videos. Thank you for watching. My name is Nikai Rimmer, and I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. Please uh, like and subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.